Go for it. Oh, yeah. Three pre-rolls today, starting with ASPCA Pet Insurance. Your pet is one of a kind, and so is their journey. While every playful moment is a memory in the making, sometimes our cats and dogs are a little too good at getting in, into trouble. That's why you should check out ASPCA Pet Health Insurance to explore coverage. Visit ASPCA Pet Insurance dot com slash jrvp that's aspca pet insurance dot com slash jrvp this is a paid advertisement insurance is underwritten by either independence american insurance company or united states fire insurance company and produced by ptz insurance agency limited the aspca is not insured and is not engaged in the business of insurance ag one's back it's just one scoop mixed in water once a day every day it makes me feel energized every morning if there's one product that i had to recommend to elevate your health it's ag1 that's why we've partnered with them for so long so if you want to take ownership of your health start with ag1 try ag1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin d3 plus k2 and five free ag1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash jrvp that's drinkag1.com slash jrvp check it out finally it's Robin Hood. If you only have a 401k, you're not getting the most for retirement. Add an IRA, then boost it by 3% with Robin Hood. And if you transfer in any retirement account, you get 3% on top of that. There's no limit to the match. Robin Hood Gold gets you the biggest contribution match of any IRA on the market. Sign up for Robin Hood Gold at Robinhood.com slash boost by April 30th. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Investing involves risks. 3% match requires gold for one year from first match. Must keep IRA for five years. Match on transfers subject to additional terms and conditions. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC three pre-rolls. Amazing. Not as amazing as Anthony's triumphant return to Cleveland. Uh, missing uh, Yarmir Yager bobblehead dolls and the origins of the JRVP whisper all coming up in episode 239 of the Jesselnick and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. I know the feeling of being trapped from all the things that you built. Hmm. I'm feeling good. Yeah, I'm feeling you, good this week. You I'm look good. I'm a little tired, but it, th- I look good. That's what I was going to get to. <laughs> you jump, you cut me off and interrupted me with what I was about to say. A couple of weeks ago, I said it. I look like shit. I told you don't watch the YouTube. I look bad. And then I got a haircut. I got the beard trim. <laughs> you know? I got some stuff done to my skin to make it look nice again. To even it out. I'm beautiful. And I'm feeling good. I'm eating well. I'm eating healthy. I'm still not sleeping at all. But I'm eating healthy. I'm working out. I'm ready to shoot the special. Yep. Aaron, where am I going towards? Towards Milwaukee. Towards Milwaukee. What hat am I wearing? Milwaukee Brewers. That's right. I'm thinking about Milwaukee at all times. I'm ready. It's weeks away. May as well be tomorrow. May as well be 10 years from now. I'm fucking ready. Call Tiffany Haddish and tell him there's a new sheriff in town because I'm ready. I went this weekend. I went to Ohio. Okay. I went. I was going to go to Youngstown, Ohio for a Wednesday night show. They said, we don't need you. And so I canceled it. It was a 2,500-seat theater. I sold 400 tickets. We canceled it. I would have loved to have come there and found out what there is to do in Youngstown, Ohio, but I did not. Hopefully, those 400 people went to either uh, Cincinnati, which was an incredible show, Columbus, most fun I've ever had in Columbus. I've been on record. My least favorite comedy club in the world, Columbus Funny Bone. And I've gone there to theaters, and it's always been a little rough. A little weird. Very nice theater, but I didn't like the vibe in there. This theater in Columbus, amazing. Loved them. And then Cleveland, triumphant return. Incredible. I thought maybe the crowd would be mad at me because of what happened last time where people were like, we've heard some of this already. We're not that into it. It was a beautiful theater. A couple hundred seats shy of a sellout, which I was impressed with. I thought it was going to be like half filled. And everyone was just pumped that I was there. Great show from beginning to end. Uh, I closed the book on Cleveland in 2024 sorry about 2023 cleveland 
That was a fiasco. When I talked about it on stage, people seemed into it. I told, I said after the show, if you liked it, enjoy what I did. Leave here tonight. Go to the Masonic Temple, and burn it to the ground. That's the name of the theater that I performed in. <laughs> Not just any temple. Greg's looking at me like I'm I'm giving hate speech here. But the weekend was uh, was a great weekend. Loved my Ohio weekend. Now this weekend I leave tomorrow to go to Portland, Maine. Um, I got a show in Providence, Providence, Rhode Island. Where am I in Rhode Island? I am in, uh, yeah, Providence, Rhode Island, New York City at the Beacon, and then Newark, New Jersey. Hmm. A couple hundred seats left uh, the weekend. If you guys want to get tickets, you still can. Things aren't sold out. Uh, Providence might be, but uh, but there's a few seats available. Come and see it. Then I think I get a week off, and then I have LA, which Greg is, keeps on emailing me to remind me, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and then. Where am I going, Aaron, the week after L.A.? Towards Milwaukee. Towards fucking Milwaukee. You told me to email you. I did. To remind you mm -hmm. to, to set aside tickets. And how many times did you do it? Well, I sent you an email on Friday. Mm -hmm. Unbeknownst to myself, mm -hmm. um, I sent one on Sunday, not remembering that I had already sent one on Friday. Yeah, I thought I was crazy. When I saw the second one, I was like, am I nuts? Did I, am I, did I imagine... Was I anticipating Greg's email so much that I imagined it, and now I'm seeing it again? But I. The but first you didn't time even I call it, me out for it. I just suddenly had a, a thought today because I saw. Hey, I saw it there. I saw your response for the first time in my inbox, and I, I'm an idiot. Uh, but I enjoyed the top of that show. I mean, you're just raring to go. Once I finish the pre rolls, it's all downhill for me on this show. That's my hard work, and then you just go. I mean, you're lucky because as soon as you text, you emailed me the second time. I called Aaron. I said, Aaron, what are you doing? You were like, my, he said, my daughter's sick. I'm really busy. And I said, you got a minute? And he said, of course. And Aaron and I talked for about two hours on the phone real, about how we were going to, to show the two emails on the screen. And as, as Aaron said, ruin Greg's life. I said, let's take him down a peg or two. Aaron said, ruin his life. And then when you emailed me, and we're like, I actually, I just realized I emailed you twice. I, I called Aaron again. I said, Aaron, how's it going? He was like, my wife's about to leave me. And I said, you got it. You got half an hour for me. He said, of course. And I said, hey, let's forget about the plan and uh, just have a normal podcast, Aaron. Yeah. How did everything turn out, by the way? It's real, it's real rough over here. Are you coming to the show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, I need to this email like them. A, a whole email. Uh, reunion. Yeah. Well, he should have two extra... Seats set aside. We never even got what that quote is from. Was that from Martyr? No, that is from uh, the new Schoolboy Q album. I've been listening ah, to it. It sounded a lot. familiar to me. It's great. And then I read a review looking for any quote that I could put in here. Um, and that was it. But uh, yeah, school, new Schoolboy Q is great. Uh, check that out. Listen, I'm going to, I've got a recommendation at the end of the episode, but I've got to give one up top. Okay. And listen, I, I say this with the caveat that I have burned our listeners many times with my recommendations of stand-up comedy that have turned out to be ironic. I get it. I cannot help myself. When I have recommended something that I think is truly great, and when I say great, it's, this is Anthony Jeselnik, the comedian. Forget about Greg's best friend, you know? Forget about Aaron's side piece. I'm neither of those things right now. I am just <laughs> Anthony Jeselnik, comedy god. Living, breathing comedy god, and I'm telling you right now, I've been friends with Rory Scovel for a long time. Rory Scovel is my dad's favorite comedian. Hmm. Ever since he saw Rory open for me at the DC Improv uh, 15 years ago. My dad keeps asking about Rory Scovel. I love him. He's great. I saw his brand new HBO comedy special. When I say brand new, it came out in the past month. It's on HBO. It's called Rory Scovel, Religion, Sex, A Few Things In Between, and A Few Things In Between. It is awesome. It is incredible. Rory has always been one of my favorites. A very silly, goofy, smart stand-up. And he leveled up. And I texted him to tell him this. And I was like trying not to insult him. To be like, listen, you've gotten so much better. The jump from your last special, the jump from where I've seen you. He has clearly put in, I don't know if he put in extra work. Or if he just kind of like gets it more. The motherfucker leveled up and it's incredible. It is a masterpiece. Uh, and again, not, not masterpiece in terms of like inside or in the net. He's not saying anything, but it is great. It's Roy Scovel at his absolute best. 
go watch this special on Max, HBO, whatever it's called now. But Rory Scovel is awesome, and this is great. If you like Nate Bargatze, if you like Tom Segura, like uh, the, if you like Mark Maron, any of the comics that I like, love and think are great, Rory Scovel is right up there and uh, high up there now. High up there with this special. Motherfucker leveled up. Check it out. Watch it. Tell me if you agree with me or you think I'm trying to pull your leg again because I swear to God, mm. this is hilarious. Like rewinding it to watch again to laugh at jokes, which I never do. To get me to laugh at a special is that means it's an amazing special. If I laugh even once. So to laugh multiple times, rewind, watch again. I'm filming it on my phone and posting it on Instagram. It is awesome. What, Aaron, if, what if there was just one amazing joke that you laughed at in a special? Then I would talk the about the, the joke. Special then I would talk. Great. I've had friends. Then is it a great special? I've had friends put out specials because most specials are so bad that one joke that makes you laugh is a, a good special in my book. I've had friends put out specials and I know they're going to ask me. So I watch it until I find one joke that I laugh at. And then I remember that I write that joke down. And when they ask me about it, I say I loved and I tell them. And then I turn it off. Because I do not like watching. You better hope they don't Rory listen to incredible. the uh, Jessel, Nick, and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. I guarantee they do not listen to the Jessel, Nick, and Rosenthal Vanity Project. JRVP. Junior Vice President. Well, why don't they start fucking listening to the Jessel, Nick, and Rosenthal Vanity Project? JRVP. Junior Vice President. If one of my friends in comedy told me they listened to my podcast, I would... <laughs> Pinch myself because I'm dreaming. <laughs> Make uh, that the clip. So did Scoville um, take your compliment in the way it was intended? He he didn't take any offense that you're saying he was leveling up. I think I left out leveled up. I think I just would like like it's it's incredible. It's a I, maybe I can I can read the text I sent him. I mean I'm not asking you to. It's, it's I, up hey, to you. Listen, I'm telling you what I'm doing. I said, dude. Caught your new special last night. I've always been a fan, but that was something else, man. Just wall-to-wall -wall killer. Congratulations. You must be very proud. Yeah, I left out the level up, but I'm saying it here, and I would tell him to his face. He's always been, he's always been good on the verge of great. Now he's great. It is great. Watch the special. I'd love to talk to someone about it. I wish it was on Netflix and not Max so that more people would see it. I think we can get people to watch it on Max. There's nothing else on Max. There's nothing else on Max. X-Men 97, that's not on Max. That's on Disney Plus, which I canceled because it fucking sucks. Even though I would have loved to have watched X-Men 97. Well, maybe they get Disney Plus. Yeah, that Disney Plus is for, you know, it's adults for babies. children. It's for little kids. <laughs> uh, I just watched uh, the Richard Linklater. It's like a documentary about uh, his, his hometown in prison life. You mean boyhood? The, no, the criminal justice system in Texas, which doesn't sound like... You know, prison life in t in Texas. Oh, you're, you're, you're talking watch about it. Before Sunset. He does kind of reference some of those. Well, Boyhood, uh, you realize how much he pulled from from his real life. But it was good, by the way. I don't know if that's making rec recommendation station at any point, but it was quite good. Do you know what it's called? What is it called? Let me look it up. God Save Texas. Is confused. It's a si <laughs> Everybody wants some. <laughs> God Save Texas Hometown Prison. Link later. Always a fan. Um, it's good to have you here at your real job. What you're doing... Out on the road, making all this money. I'm doing that for the fans. That's easy. And this take, is a job. And I take the money from the road and I invest it back into the pod. <laughs> if you look, if you're watching on YouTube, look at all the stuff we've put up in here. Look at look at the mugs. Yeah. I was like, hey, can we get can we get a, a mug that says uh, all things comedy? And Aaron was like, hey, if you give me three times the money, I can do you even better. And now we have it. Aaron, where did you get those mugs? I did not buy those mugs. I mean, if you like our background now, you're going to love it for the next however many time, in many years we're at All Things mm -hmm. Comedy, because it's never going to change. This and, is it. And let me tell you this. We're never leaving All Things Comedy. <laughs> I don't know if you know anything about the world of podcasting. Aaron, do you follow the world of podcasting outside of All Things Comedy? <laughs> not really. It's going to shit. Every company's closing E from Entourage who I didn't even know was a real person, has apparently stolen millions from people. What? Cast me, yeah. E from, on, the guy who plays the E on Entourage. The guy started, who plays him, though, yes. the actor. Okay. I made a joke that he was, that I don't understand the difference well, between Well, it's like based on a real person, so, it, you know, just clarifying. Someone who just had the name E? 
It's like based on some figure in Hollywood. No, Turtle was a real person. No. Turtle's a real guy. Okay. And then uh, and then Mark Wahlberg was E. And then it goes from there. Um, yeah, he's still he's he's a piece of shit. And anyone who's starting a podcast right now, you're in trouble. <laughs> Unless you're on All Things Comedy. We are going to stay. This is a port in a storm. And we are going to stay here until Bill Burr makes us leave. If Aaron quits tomorrow. And Aaron's like, hey, I'm out of here. Who's coming with me? I'm going to stand up and say, who's replacing Aaron? Because we're not leaving. You hear me, Aaron? I hear you. A reverse Jerry Maguire, really. If he tried to leave and bring us with him. A reverse Jerry Maguire. No, that's what happened with him. Well, I know, but in that case, you know, he would, I don't know. <clears throat> you won't be my Rod Tidwell. Aaron. I'm saying in you... that case, Renee Zellweger had less power in the company, and she decides to leave. She takes a chance on him. In this case, I'm giving Jesselnik more power look, than Aaron, look, and so he's like, you know. Look. You're Renee. You, You're Renee, you, Aaron. You complete me. Show me the money. <laughs> and now it's time for Did We Get Any Notes? Did we get any notes? Notes. 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 Did we get any notes? Notes. 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 Did we get any notes? Oh, we got some notes. And listen, I've I said when I came to All Things Comedy, I called Al Madrigal and I said, I got some questions before I come here. And he said, What do you got? And I said, I don't want to join a comedy gang. I'm not when I hear people talk about Rogan's crew. I rolled my eyes so hard. He was like, don't worry about that. It's fine. I don't even see Bill Burr. We're, it's fine. We're, we're, it was just a company. You don't have to do anything for us. I'm like, great. And I said, I also don't take any notes. When Comedy Central sends me a note, I write back, fuck you. And then I talk about it on the air. And he laughed and said, we don't do that either. Guess what? I'm driving into the podcast today. And I get a phone call. And it says, possible spam. I answer it anyway. And I hear, ah, geez, Anthony, hey. <laughs> Hey, it's Billy. Hey, 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 it's Billy. I did. Sorry to bother you. Uh, what, are you in the car? And I'm like, Yeah, Bill. I'm on my way to the podcast. He's like, Yeah, always working hard. Always work. Always in the car. <laughs> I hope he's. Like, I hope you're wearing your seatbelt and your hands free. I don't want. I don't want you crashing because you're looking at your phone. <laughs> I'm like, Don't worry, Bill. And he's like, I know I don't give you notes, but I got it. Yeah, I don't know if you saw what the Steelers did today. I'm like, Yes, I get what he's going for immediately. Yeah. Do you want to explain? Well, the Steelers uh, signed Bill Burr today. Yes. Um, he goes by the alias Cameron Johnson, a punter. Uh, and you can see the the image if you're watching on the YouTube. You can see that image without any clothes on if you sign up for the Patreon. Mm-hmm. But Cameron Johnson, a.k.a. Bill Burr, is the new punter of the Steelers. Yeah, if you, go, if you sign up for the Patreon, you can see Cameron Johnson naked. And if you sign up for the Super Patreon... Super Patreon, you can watch Aaron pleasure himself to the picture of Cameron Johnston. We pull back all the way. It's so good. But this guy, a lot of people say online that Bill Burr looks like Cameron Johnston. Cameron Johnston looks like Bill Burr. And Bill loves the bit. He loves it. And he was like, Anthony, I know you're a Pittsburgh guy. Could you just, could you do the bit for me? Could you do, I know you don't like doing bits like that, but would you do it for me? Would you do it for Billy? And he gets it just for Billy, for me. And so I said, okay, Bill, we'll bring it up on the air and we'll talk about how he looks like you. Bill said he shaved his head to look once he saw the punter for the mm-hmm. first time. He was excited. As long as this fucking guy who looks kind of like Bill Burr, <laughs> as long as this guy can punt it like further than fucking 30 yards when we're on fourth and 12 every four plays on offense. Then I'm going to be happy. Who do we? Was it Percy Harvin? Was that our punter last year? Presley Harvin. Presley Harvin. He was bad. Fucking sucked so bad. It was so bad that I did not understand <laughs> what was happening. <laughs> You're going to be punting a lot with Russell Wilson uh, as your quarterback. Although be punting less. I like Justin Fields, I like that pickup. So Listen, there you go. I like Justin Fields. I like Russell Westbrook. I did not like Kenny Pickett. I did not like him. I'm so glad he's gone. When you get a hometown boy like that, there's like too many hopes. You can't be analytical that I'm so glad he's just gone. Mm. And I think that all the stories I've heard about him, anyone who was like a picket hater was right. 
Yeah. I think he, I think he I think he handled uh, adversity poorly. And I do I think they set him up to succeed. I hope he d- does better in Philadelphia. Absolutely. Uh, you are a Marcus Mariota light. And I am glad I never bought your jersey. I would. It was funny to see after the Steelers traded him, and people it would be like, "What am I going to do with this?" And it's like a signed Kenny Pickett jersey <laughs> in a frame, and all the comments are like, "What were you ever doing with that? That was a mistake." So go with God, Kenny Pickett. Rest in peace. I'm all about Russell Westbrook and. Well, what about a get, a get a Cameron Johnson jersey? Just looking him up here, five uh, eleven. 195 pounds. That sounds about Bill Burr size. Uh, a former Australian rules football player. Versatile. Went to, uh, an Australian. I don't know. That's probably know. too much on Cameron Johnston. I bet. You know what? Unless, unless you know. I won't get into it. All right. Uh, next week, we've got a mailbag. Uh, you, you guys gave us great mailbag questions the past couple of weeks. Keep sending them in. We'll have more ba- mailbags coming up. But uh, next week, mailbag, and you'll see us uh, in a couple of weeks. I did have one uh, note from uh, Joey. It was a bit, a bit of a note. I thought this was interesting. Giving us ideas for while you're on tour in the in. Uh, Asia and Europe and whatnot. And he said, here's how you guys fill up those extra episodes. All you guys have to do is, quote, sit back and enjoy the ride, if you know what I mean. Thank you, you know later. That's not, that, that was the thing we could get away with on the NFL Network. <laughs> and Comedy Central, we could have easily gotten away with it. We worked too hard at Comedy Central for what that contract was. We could have easily done a sit back and enjoy the ride for 40 episodes a year, and no one would have said shit. We would have just kept cashing checks. Um, but maybe. I, I got to think that the advertisers would be furious. I think that uh, listenership would plummet. But I wouldn't mind having Aaron you know, clip a song on a loop for an hour and a half. <laughs> uh, yeah, for Aaron and, and any of our listeners that have joined us since the days of uh, the Rosenthal and Jessen Lick Vanity Project, RJVP. Check out, it was probably like the third to last episode or so. And enjoy one of my favorite moments and uh, the moment that inspired an executive at the NFL to sweatily uh, pull me aside at the Super Bowl and worry that that uh, Anthony was getting us all fired. He's not getting fired. He doesn't even work here. We're the ones that are going to get fired. And where's he now? Uh, he's at WME, doing great. Yeah. He, doing great. Uh, did he get fired or did he just leave? Uh, I think he left. I think yeah. he saw the writing on the wall and uh, it all worked out. There was writing all over that wall. And that was, did we get any notes? Did we get any notes? <laughs> Like I look good. I look real good. Wait, what's with the skin stuff? What what's skin? You said I did skin stuff. Yeah, I don't do What anything. does that even mean? Like like I don't do I don't take care of my face the way people okay. in my industry so you, take care of the face. You washed your face. I you I, some I got I got some, I got some moisturizer. I'm on like a plan. Okay. I got like someone to tell me what to do okay. and I will keep doing that until the second I stop filming and then I'm going back to what got me here. Okay? I look like this at 45 without all that shit. Don't tell me I need that shit. Okay, you tell me I need to take baby's blood and baby placenta and smear it up and smear it on my face before I go to bed at night. I already do that. I've been doing that. I don't need moisturizer. And now it's time to take it down to a place that is 100% placenta. It's email corner. Email corner. Email. Email. Emails are a thing. 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 Emails. Emails. Email corner. corner. Emails. Emails. It's email corner. Guys, emails are a thing. And anyone who tries to tell me they're not, it's fucking go time immediately. They are a thing. They are things. We, we like to let you guys send them in. JRVP Junior Vice President at gmail.com. Sometimes I pick them, sometimes Greg picks them. And then Greg reads them. And then I answer them. It's email corner. Diamonds around the world unite. <laughs> yeah, lately uh, I've been picking them. Uh, I like that. You're on the road. And uh, I picked this first one, which is um, a callback to last week. He says he has nothing funny to add. He just is a failed comedian. 
who lived in the same New York City apartment you talked about last week or two weeks ago. I don't even remember which. And that I mentioned, Greg mentioned, being a pain to get to. When I heard it was a cul-de-sac in Manhattan by an elementary school and you had to walk three blocks to get in, I knew it. I mean, how does he know it's the exact apartment building, though? It could be anyone on that block. I don't know. Does he know? Does Anthony know RuPaul lived in the same building at the same time? A lot of creative energy in one space. Did he know Mikhail or Arturo or maybe Nikki? I lived on the first floor. Nothing like children uh, screaming daily to wake you up. I did not know a single person in the building. Uh, the closest I came to interacting with anyone was uh, after like six months of throwing my cigarettes out the window. I realized that the letters in the in the lobby were directed towards me and stopped doing that. Um, <laughs> I don't think Ru- I think he's wrong. I don't think RuPaul lived in there. That was a that was a terrible building. Maybe way back in the day, Maybe if, if you weren't on this fucking sixth floor, it wasn't so bad. Okay, but uh, I never again. I never woke up with the kids, but no one in that building ever talked to me. When I was living, the Catherine and I moved in there, and the Catherine moved out real quick. But uh, when we moved in, like she was t- meeting neighbors, and everyone was talking to her. Mm. And then I would come by, and everyone would just look at the floor, and I was like, "All right, this is how things go for me. I'm not going to have any friends here." And then I talked to no one. You could have met this listener. I, I, he did ask, I realized in the end, how did Anthony transition from L.A. to New York comedy scene? That, that, did it change your style at all when you were going from L.A. to New York? Did you shift it at all? No. Um, I was already kind of fully formed by the time I came to New York. I had a couple of TV credits, so it was pretty easy for me to get into the comedy cellar, to get into the comic strip. I didn't have to kind of like re-audition the way... Uh, a lot of people would. People would leave LA and go to New York. It's like, you're starting over. You got to get back into it. And I already had my uh, my voice pretty much. And then I got Fallon. And for that year, I didn't write any jokes for myself. So I was just mm. kind of repeating my set every night at the cellar or the comic strip just to keep that muscle going. And then after that year was done at Fallon, I was able to write. But it didn't change my style at all. Um, and I, again, I was able to easily get into the best clubs and then just stuck there. Like I didn't have to kind of run around and... Uh, an audition, but I was I was lucky. The confidence to say fully formed at age, I don't know what you were then, thirty three or something. Yeah, I was already different, and I just liked being different. Like the New York guys were all looking at me like, "Wow, how do you do that?" that you I wasn't fit. You fit well be. in New York. You fit well in New York. I feel like already they would, they would like you. Yeah. No, I'm just saying like the cellar. I saw you at the cellar. I loved seeing you at the at the cellar. Just one of the, like you fit well there. One of the best sets of my life was my uh, audition set to to uh, join the cellar, where they put you up at like midnight on a Saturday without telling anybody. You do like five minutes, and I remember just like the MC like didn't remember my name, and like had this really awkward intro where the audience was already laughing at me like I'm some loser, and I just fucking tore that guy apart. And then I remember telling the audience, <laughs> I go, the, the, he messed my name up, and I go, my name's Jesselnick, and they laughed, and I go, oh, you haven't heard of me? I'm new. I go, but I'm fucking great. I'm going to tell you five jokes. And in three jokes, you're going to know my name. And in five, you'll be able to spell it. And they're all like, what the fuck? And then I just destroyed. And then went up and the, the woman at the cellar was like, you passed. And I was like, I fucking know I passed. <laughs> Give me this club. It was great. Next question. The RJVP slash JRVP whisper. How did this come to be? This is from John. Let me, okay, I want to see if Greg knows because I know the exact answer. I can see it like it was yesterday. Do you know? Oh, no, not if there's an answer. My answer was just going to be Anthony just decided to do it on a whim uh, once because it made him laugh and then it stuck. I thought it was fun to like hype the show, like to have like pointless hype in the show. And so when we would say uh, the Rosenthal and Jessel McVanity project, we would RJVP. we would yell our JVP. We would go the Rosenthal Jessel McVanity project. The Rosenthal Jessel McVanity project. Our JVP. And then people hated it so much. <laughs> we liked it. We we thought it was fun. And then the next week, every comment was like, "Do not do that anymore." <laughs> And I, we still liked it. So we did it for one more episode, and people were like, please. And we're like, all right, let's whisper. And that worked for us, too. So we became the whisper, and then JRVP, we, we did the whisper, and then I like junior vice president. So we had uh, Tamposi uh, come in and... Uh, and Dang, that this is why we need you around, the official JRVP historian. That's right. I can't remember anything. I'm, I'm always amazed when I'm when I'm like reading I'm reading a memoir you uh, recommended maybe I'll save it uh, Dirtbag Massachusetts mm-hmm. by your friend right now 
uh, I'm always just impressed that people can remember so much stuff. Yeah. I think you. I think by writing it down, you start to remember, remember mm-hmm. more. Our next one's from Becca, and I'm glad you remembered that. That was a better story than I even expected. Becca uh, says, I need help convincing people that Arkansas isn't real. I have a strong belief Arkansas is not a real place. I have no idea where it is on the map. I don't think anyone has ever actually been there. Also, the name Arkansas. Uh, so, like, try harder to fact uh, to hide the fact that it's a made-up state. When I mention this to others in casual conversation, most people disagree. I need help with stronger arguments to get people on my side. Anthony, have you ever done a show in, quote, Arkansas? Greg, what football team do people from Arkansas root for? Please help. I mean, some good points by Becca. Look, on the surface, this sounds ridiculous. Okay? Aaron, how many stars are on the flag? The American flag? 50. 50, that's right. Do you know what those stars represent? States. That's right. How many states? 50. How many? And how, we name one of them. California. Name another one. <laughs> Illinois. Name, name the one where I'm trying to get you to name. Arkansas. That's right. <laughs> it's one of them. <clears throat> yeah. can, you, can you point to which one it is? Which star? Yeah. No. A second from the left top. Oh, we're going alphabetical. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's right. Yeah. That's how Betsy did it. That's how Betsy Ross wanted it done. That's how we're doing it. Arkansas, I've never been to. I, I once had a show booked in Arkansas, and I'll never forget this because it was way back in the day. This is before I've had a couple TV credits before the roast, before any of that. I've never been on the road really, and I get offered to do a show with a bunch of other comics. I'm doing 20 minutes or whatever in Arkansas, <clears throat> and I'm like, oh wow, I've never been to Arkansas. That's interesting. That'll be a fun thing to do. And who else is on the lineup? And the only name I recognize is Tig Notaro, and this is before Tig is anyone either. But I know Tig. So my like, great, I say yes, and it's money. It's like it's a thousand bucks, and this is a long time ago where that was great, and uh, and then I get the contract, and it, the name of the show was the Nobodies of Comedy, <laughs> <laughs> and I lose my mind immediately. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Why would anyone buy tickets to see the Nobodies of Comedy? Why not name it anything else? And why I, my act does not work if I'm a nobody of comedy? And I'm like, I, I try to get out of it. And they're like, no, you're coming. Like, we're not letting you out. And then like a week before they go, hey, listen, we've been, this has a, been a tour around the South. We've been having issue with material. So you have to be G rated. If this is a problem, let us know. And I go, it's a problem. <laughs> and I did not have to go. So I did not go to Arkansas, which kind of fuels your point that there is no Arkansas. Mm. I know that Jimmy Johnson played for Arkansas and won a championship. Jimmy Johnson had the four rings. Was about, he won, he won as, an, as an Arkansas coach, mm-hmm. as a Miami coach. I don't know if he won as a player. I think he must have won as a player. And I think... And then he won as a... Jerry Jones was also a player there, now that you mention it. I, they, might, they probably weren't teammates, Jerry Jones. That's all I know about Arkansas. Well, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton governor. I think if you're listing the 50 states... Most forgettable. Most ones likely to be made up. Delaware's maybe ahead of it. They got that Wayne's World pop, though. Mm -hmm. Arkansas could be next. I don't know what else is on that short list of states that you would forget. Anything with the north or south in front of it? Yeah, but that's... That could go. That alone... It takes up a lot of real estate on the map. You cannot point to Arkansas on the map. Right. I think I drove through it, potentially on the way back from New Orleans to Massachusetts once. But maybe not. I don't really know. Who yeah. would remember? No. Nobody would remember. We don't know if it's a thing. It's like Flat Earth. Is there an Arkansas? Do they have internet? I had to picture Arkansas. <laughs> it, the, the, it looks like, like just a dirt, like a dirt lot where someone like abandoned a shack. They like started building and then we're like, let's get out of here. Let's go to it's a It's supposed to be beautiful. State. You know, there's parts of it that are beautiful, parts of it very backward, obviously, not ranking high on the old like public education list. Uh, most of what I know is from the worst book I've ever finished in my life, uh, which was called My Life by Bill Clinton. Mm. I don't know why I read that. Read that? <laughs> well, when I was, I mentioned this on the show, when I was younger, I decided I was going to either get rid of or read every book I had. Mm-hmm. And, and and I would eventually get to the end of this project. And it was a lot of getting rid of. And I would have gotten rid of that. But it was signed by Bill Clinton as a present for my mom. And I thought, 
I, I have to either get rid of it or I have to read it. And it's fucking terrible. It's written like it's a political stump speech of just him thanking people for like a thousand pages. And he can't shut up. Yeah, you don't. And, not, and, uh, and I think I finished it. You go, I think listen. I skimmed like the last 200 pages because I finally decided this is ridiculous. And you know what that book's doing? It's, it's in my, I still have it. I don't know why. I, I guess you just shouldn't why, get rid of it. I know it why you still signed. have it. I know why you still have it. Okay. And Aaron knows why you still have it. I know if our listeners do. Anyone who read <laughs> Bill Clinton's My Life knows that no one read any of that book except for chapter 26. You go to chapter 26, <laughs> you rub one out. You close the book and you never think about it again. Chapter 26 in Bill Clinton's My Life is balls to the wall erotica. Balls to the wall. Here's what happened in the Oval Office. And yes, it's great. But everything else is just like, why am I even reading about these people? Why am I reading about this? Oh, your friend killed himself. I don't care. Get to chapter 26. I want to talk about the cigar. (laughs) It's also rare because less people have read it because everyone's chapter 26 is ruined from following the instructions that you just gave. That's right. That's how I do it. it, it the book's been out for 20 years. You should have masturbated way earlier. <laughs> you lost your chance. <laughs> and that was Email Corner Shine On Diamonds. Now it's time for ad copy. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is boosting every single dollar you transfer in from another retirement account with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3 percent match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is only good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. The claim is as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member at SIPC is a registered broker dealer. That's what, that's what I think when you when you read that ad. I think of like I'm Matthew McConaughey having dinner with uh, having lunch with Leonardo DiCaprio in uh, <laughs> in in Wolf, of Wall in Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, I just saw I saw it the other night that scene. I'm that's gonna... uh, did, Aaron, did I nail it? Is that what we're like? 100%. You Thank know what I think of? I think of AG1. I think about the old days when people would uh, try to eat 75 different multivitamins. Oh, I'm going to try a bit, little bit of this. I'm going to try a little bit of that. I'll have a little bit of this. No, I'm doing it all in my AG1. Look, you ever get up in the morning and you want to take, you take your vitamin? You get up early, you throw your vitamin in, you take a sip of water, and then you throw up immediately because you took a vitamin with an empty stomach? Mm. We've all done that. It sucks. That's why I stopped taking vitamins. I had to get my vitamins from AG1. And you know what else I get in my AG1? I get gut health. I get, what do they call the things that help your gut health? What are those things? Probiotics. Are? Probiotics. probiotics, yeah. You could take a daily vitamin and a probiotic. Make sure you eat something first. You know, make sure your stomach's settled and take all those things. No. Empty stomach, AG1, eight fluid ounces of cold water, a scoop or a packet. I shake it up. I drink it down. My stomach feels great in the morning. I feel light. I go work out after my AG1. I don't have to worry about the things people who take daily vitamins have to worry about. I'm stress-free. 
That's right. Taking care of your health isn't always easy, but it should be simple. That's why for the last four years on this podcast, we've been drinking AG1 every day. No exceptions. It's just one scoop mixed in water once a day, every day. Makes me feel great. Unless you're drinking the travel packs, which is what I'm doing right now. Because Anthony had so many boxes of travel packs, he just gave them to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm drinking those because he's, he's just drowning in AG1. That's because each serving of AG1 delivers my daily dose of vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and more. A powerful, healthy habit. That's also powerfully simple. If there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. That's why we've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1. You get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash JRVP. That's drinkag1.com slash JRVP. Check it out. Now it's time uh, to talk about our pets, you know? Anthony's got a pet. I've got a pet. I've got Nori, uh, my tortoise. Uh, Anthony's got Rummy. Um, and I got Rummy. There's nothing I would not do for my dog. I have a full-time assistant while I'm on the road, so I don't have to send my dog to a kennel. Okay? That's how much I love my dog. There is nothing, there is no medical treatment I would not spring for to keep my dog alive, healthy, and thriving. You want your animal to be healthy so you can feel good about your pet and about the life you're giving your pet. And the best way to ensure that your pet has everything they need in life is pet insurance. Imagine this. You're at the vet's office uh, with Rummy again, knowing uh, the vet care costs continue to rise. You're waiting to hear how expensive the bill is going to be. But if you had pet insurance, your pet would be covered for accidents or illnesses. And that's why you should check out ASPCA pet health insurance the ac aspca pet health insurance program offers customizable accident and illness plans making it easier for pet parents like you like anthony to help your pet get the care they may need the aspca pet health insurance program has been around for over 18 years they've helped more than 600,000 pets during that time they allow you to customize your plan helping ensure your pet's plan is as unique as they are because vet bills can add up quickly especially when you're least expecting it. it's simple use their app to submit a claim you'll receive reimbursement for eligible vet bills directly into your bank account to explore coverage visit aspca pet insurance dot com slash jrvp that's aspca pet insurance dot com slash jrvp again that's aspca pet insurance dot com slash jrvp this is a paid advertisement insurance is underwritten by either independence american insurance company or united states fire insurance company and produced by ptz insurance agency limited the aspca is not insure is not engaged in the business of insurance and that was ad copy let's get to headlines. Let's get to headlines. Let's get to headlines. Headlines. We got some good ones this week. It's gonna be a banger. Uh, a lot of pressure, though. I've noticed the last three Jesselnick and Rosenthal vanity projects, JRVPs, uh, junior vice president, <laughs> have uh, ended at exactly. 67 minutes so we now have to time this to do that exactly i think we're only at 42 or 43 that's a little light compared to usual we'll just i mean if if we're short we'll just have aaron fuck around at the end like we normally do (laughs) sure if you haven't listened all the way through like listen to the if you listen to the end of the podcast there's like a minute of silence and then it's aaron doing whatever he wants and he said some wild shit on there some like crazy shit yeah Listen to it. So we've all had uh, bad first days on the job. Uh, I left California entirely after a bad first day on the job about 20 years ago. Uh, But that was nothing compared to a Florida police officer, Kai Cromer, sworn in as a deputy on Monday and then arrested later that day on child porn charges. Unbelievable. I mean, talk about bad luck. If he had just, like, when you're a cop, if you can get through the first week, then you're untouchable. Then it's Blue Lives Matter. You can't, you're above the law. But that first, it's probationary that first week. Sure. So they signed him in. They swore him in Monday. Did they, when they swore him in, did they know he was under investigation? Or they, like, he was like, thank you. And then as he, like, went to pull his speech out, like, child porn. Wow. Um, it's not as funny as that. It's, it's 
it's it's pretty disturbing and sad. They assigned him. I mean, this is they assigned him to do security at a high school, and a victim, a courageous victim, saw him there and feared for her safety and reported him. When they found this out, they found his Snapchat. No fewer than four, and it sounds like a lot more girls from the school then saw him and further kept um, came forward and said that how uncomfortable that they felt. And he was actually using, according to them, his job that he was getting as like a way to manipulate them. Dan, I mean, Anthony is... Uh, is has his mouth open i'm stunned by this i thought it was way uh more fun <laughs> than you this. picked the headline actually no yeah, way i picked you picked the headline here. well i don't i didn't read the article but look before. when i saw it this is this is a just like special if you hadn't picked it i would have come to you and said hey why don't we have this in here he got fired on his first day for child porn that's comical um this is why i'm i'll get into this for a second when people talk about like blue lives matter and there was the thing about like, oh, we need to respect police. We need to protect police. Police are more important than, uh, than people who are being abused by police. No, they are not. Police for the most part are, listen, they're good cops. And there are cops that you would not turn your back on for a second. I knew a female police officer who was the mother of a friend of mine in high school. And she had told her daughter if you ever get pulled over by a police officer and you're driving, do not pull over on the side of the street. You keep driving until you get to a gas station or a public place. Because cops, for the most part, and this is coming from a female officer, are complete pieces of shit who are not beyond sexually assaulting a girl they pull over on the street. So this whole, like, we need to respect cops above all, no, I think it's suspect that you want the job in the first place. I think every cop who works at a high school has some crazy shit in their closet and should be fired right now. <laughs> why, why do we need cops at a high school? Anyways, uh, I did not expect Anthony to go hard, to go hard on this story, but I appreciated it. And uh, I agreed with everything you said. And yeah, there's not many funny angles uh, to this story, but apparently yeah, he was telling people, I'm going to be law enforcement. I'm very powerful. And he was sort of forcing these girls uh, I guess, you know, he he wasn't that much older. I think he was like 20, something like that. Not that that excuses anything, even in the least, but he, he knew some of them somehow anyways. And um, and he's a criminal, and now he's going to jail. And it was all easy to find out because it was on fucking Snapchat, too. Like, he, it was just like how... In, beyond being... Wait, wait. You know, like I thought a psychopath. Snapchat, Snapchat, you can delete. <laughs> right? You can still find these things. They can still get them. In the end, I'm, I'm trying to do the impression. I can't do it. Um, listen, if you are 30, if you are in your 30s, if you're listening to the podcast, you were in your 30s. I want you to go get your high school yearbook, and I want you to look through, and I want you to find the biggest piece of shit you can remember from your high school. Point at them, Google them. They're a cop now. Mm, Madonna back in the news. Madonna playing, I don't know if it was one show or a handful of shows at the old Kia Forum, which I'm always on top of because it's right next to where I work at SoFi Stadium. She did a bunch of shows there. I know okay. that because Liz tried yeah. to get me to go every day and right. I fought her off. She yeah. went and saw Madonna in New York and thought it was a great show. Um, I would, was not going to do that. I did not go to the Kia Forum, but I heard about this story and was excited. Right. I, saw the, I saw the video. Did you see the video? I did watch the video. We're not going to watch it on, on the show, uh, but it's like the cycle of life. It's, it is interesting. You see Madonna on that side, and you know we got, we got BTS and some other acts over at SoFi. At the Big Dog's house next door, mm -hmm. Madonna, uh, at the Forum, uh, she was playing a show and began yelling, and this was caught on camera, at a woman, what are you, what are you doing sitting 
down over there. What, what are you doing sitting down? And then she walked closer to the edge of the stage, and she realized the woman was in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. And then d- her response was, oh. And just walked, no. Well, it was, okay, uh, politically incorrect. Sorry about that. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> that made it so much worse. To me, it was like, it was like, okay, until that response. Like, you shouldn't have done it, but you could see how that would happen. It happened. But then she goes, oh, okay, politically incorrect. Sorry about that. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> yeah, it should have been. It should have been like, you should just, once you saw the wheelchair, it should have been like, oh, get a bigger wheelchair. How am I supposed to know? I would think if you're Madonna and you're rocking it, it's like like a prayer and everyone's everyone's standing. And you see someone not standing, you got to think wheelchair. You got to it's got to enter your mind that maybe they cannot stand at all. P- props to her for letting it go. Cuz if I do that, if you come to if you come to the Beacon Theater in New York this weekend and there's a lot of dancing from the audience in my show. Of course. You know, in between jokes, you want the you it's the applause break that just the rhythm gets you. And everyone's Gloria Estefan all of a sudden dancing. And if I see someone not dancing, I point them out. And I want to know why. I want the reason, as if I'm a doctor. And if they're in a wheelchair, I don't accept that answer. Well, but they could be dancing while sitting like you do so beautifully on this show. Is that acceptable? In my mind, I'm standing. I know it's like it looks like I'm dancing, but in my <laughs> mind, I am, I'm twirling all around. Uh, I... Uh, uh, maybe like just stand there and be like stand up <laughs> get her out of that chair or i'm not singing another fucking song i'm madonna i don't know why she said like <laughs> politically incorrect it was almost like she was like oh wow we got the wheelchair lady is this is this crowd getting woke yeah. like what do you mean politically incorrect? oh oh, you're, oh am i gonna get canceled now because <laughs> someone's in a wheelchair uh, the the girl in the wheelchair made a statement, or you know, wrote on social media just how she wishes everyone would back off Madonna. That she understands it was uh, a natural mistake, and uh, it happens, and it's not that big of a deal, and uh, that she loves Madonna. Yeah, because who doesn't? It's fine. It's fine that she did that. It's probably the best part of the whole concert that she did that. I would think it'd be like, what if like, if you're at a concert, let's say Greg and I go see Drake and Drake's like, why aren't you dancing? And Greg and I are like, we're white. <laughs> and he would go, oh, politically incorrect. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming to this Drake concert. Did you see the, um, the I would interview? not want to go to a Drake concert. Did you see the interv- interview with, uh, oh, what's his name now? It used to be uh, formerly most, most stuff. Uh, Yassine Bay. Yeah. Uh, he's talking about Drake. He's being interviewed, and someone's like, "What do you think about Drake?" And he's like, "Oh, why are you doing this to me?" And then he just goes, I, "It's it's nice. It makes me think of shopping. Like you should listen to this in the mall, and it's fucking so great. Fuck Drake. Fuck Madonna. Remember when Madonna kissed Drake? No. And Drake got all grossed out. He like wiped his face. Yeah, it was fun. That was fun. Remember that? That was pre-pandemic. Aaron. I think this next when Madonna men were back. men. Is going to work. I read the Madonna book, and the last 10 chapters are these different tours she's been on that sound, it was so fucking boring. So boring. What book? It, it was like a... It was a biography of Madonna. I remember when her book Sex came out, or the mm-hmm. sex book, whatever it was. We were probably, what, like 12 or something like that? Something like that. And it was just like, it was a big deal. It was like, wow, it's called sex. There's all sorts of sex stuff. She's really pushing this sex stuff to a big uh, level. And I remember being at a bookstore. I think it was in Denver. We were visiting family. And it was just like, oh, sex book is coming out. And you wanted to go over there into the sex book section. And as a 12-year-old, you wanted to leave through that. And you were going to find out. It was pretty good. My dad wouldn't let me. My dad wouldn't <laughs> let me read Madonna's sex book. He would just, I would be like, Dad, can I read it now? And he'd be like, no. I'm not done. I was like, Dad, this is not fair. <laughs> I, it, lately, my kids are getting to the age. I mean, Emika, I mean, Ellis has, you know, long since stopped wanting me to read to her at night. Years, probably since she was. But you like still do it. Eight. 
every once in a while, well, not even once in a while, I've convinced her to, to, for me to read like one book in the last two years, Wrinkle in Time, she went with. But even then, that was like once every other, every week. Anyways, Walker's reaching that age too now, where he doesn't really want me to read to him uh, at night. But maybe if I broke out. Sex book? Madonna sex book. It's <laughs> not, not bad. <laughs> Are there even words in it? I remember, like, a friend of mine had one, like, a copy so <laughs> no, much, I, like, I when I was, like, it. in my 20s, and I was like, oh, I'm not even interested, but, like, were there words? I know Vanilla Ice is in it. There might have been, like, at the bottom of the page, like, 20 words for no particular reason, but no, I don't think it was about the words. Like, you know, I don't know, setting up what, what's going on or, or just talking about sex. Who knows? Uh, let's talk about your Pittsburgh Penguins. They just keep coming up, and they can't stop squeezing every last ounce of blood out of uh, making money off your boy Yaramir Yager. And so last week, after you had already seen his number retired, they were having a Yaramir Yager night, bobblehead night, Mm -hmm. until the shipment of bobbleheads were stolen in California. Listen, this is great. This is all legend of Yaramir Yager. Like everyone in Pittsburgh thinks this is funny. People who go into the game who thought they were getting bobbleheads are just getting the rain check. They'll get their bobbleheads. I love the idea of someone being like, we fucking did it. <laughs> we like, we heisted the century, opened it up. Is it the Krugerrands? And it's fucking Yammer Yager bobbleheads. And they're just like, what? Why do we have so many of these? That it, it just makes the Yammer Yager story even better. They, I mean, if this happened to anyone else, maybe it's, it, it's definitely not a story. But Yammer Yager, I was at their uh, Jersey retirement game. One of the best uh, experiences of my life as a Penguins fan, even though they lost the game, it was incredible. And I remember they were showing the bobblehead night thing, and I'm like, why is that not tonight? Right. Exactly. Why didn't they fucking focus up and do both at the same time? Uh, but I'm, I'm okay not getting the bobblehead. The fact that they were stolen, that means that Yammer Yager is so popular. That people didn't even want to risk going to that game and not getting a bobblehead because they weren't there early enough. They had to steal them. I hope they show up. You know how, like, when the a Super Bowl uh, is over, the team that lost, they have all these T-shirts that say they were the winners, and yeah. so they send them to like a third world country, and you see kids <laughs> right. wearing them. I wonder if like these bobbleheads show up. You know, if you see them around, you know, then you know you were part of the 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 bobble heist. Well, in theory, if they do pop up, they're going to be m- more valuable now. No, because they're just making a whole new batch. Yeah. No one's going to know the difference between. And it's just him doing the Yager salute. Like it's cool. But uh, I, I can't imagine whoever stole them in uh, in California at the at the port was happy with their. Well, their I mean, thing. I gotta ask, I gotta ask the question. Everyone that's listening is thinking, where were you last Wednesday? Stealing bobbleheads. <laughs> I don't just want the one. I want I want multiple. I want thousands of bobbleheads. That's my thing. I don't own a single bobblehead. Do you? I know you have at least one, unless you got rid of it. Uh, I do have, what's his name? Um, Peter Gammons? Peter Gammons. Is he dead? N- no, he's alive. Okay. I follow him on Twitter. I have Peter Gammons. I, when he dies, yeah. I'm getting it, I get the bobblehead back. I, that's I, worth I've had real that money. Since we lived together, you gave it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, have, I had a Lou Williams one for a while because we got at Lou Williams uh, bobblehead night when we went to a Clippers game once and I just thought that was funny but it's gone, it's been uh, destroyed by my kids. I think we have a Snoop Dogg bobblehead that was given to us by someone. I don't Snoop. remember who. Uh, except it's in the murder was the case that they gave me like mm-hmm. outfit and my son, Walker's just like what? what is this? What yeah. is this for? He doesn't know Snoop. I, uh, I didn't have a bobblehead. I had a Funko Pop that I bought, it was a, after TJ Miller got canceled, I went online and I bought his Funko Pop from uh, Silicon Valley <laughs> and thought that was really funny. And then I gave it to Joe Mandy for his birthday because I know Joe would appreciate it more than me. And Joe Mandy came to my Cleveland show. He said it's his dad's birthday. Joe Mandy's a, one of my a great comedy friends, uh, one of the funniest people I know, a hilarious guy. And he said, you know, my, you're my dad's favorite comic. Can I have tickets to come see the show? And I was like, yeah, he brought his family. And at the end of the show, I was like, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a, a special a guest here tonight. One of my good friends, a hilarious comedian, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Mandy. And the audience is like, what the fuck? But they start clapping anyway. And the clapping gets louder as he stands up. And then I, as soon as I get off stage, I get a text being like, you scared the shit out of me. And he's like, now my dad's outside telling everyone, this is my son. This is the one he pointed out. <laughs> he's like, it's my worst nightmare. But I, uh, I love that. And then Joe Mandy gave me... A, uh, to, to make up for the T.J. Miller bobblehead. He gave me a, and this may not mean anything to you, but I'm sure some of our listeners will, will like this, and I bet Aaron will like it. He gave me a signed 
uh, Brendan Schaub UFC card <laughs> <laughs> that I that I now have in the plastic that I'm I'm very uh, I'm very happy about. I mean, I'm a, I'm a regular listener to the to the show. Jess on and Rosenthal Vanity Project. That is Jeremy B. That is um, Junior Vice President. Yeah, so I, I know Brendan Schwab just from those Schaub from those stories. Now, I've heard it both ways. From from last year, we're homeless uh, cats. People people were pissed off, by the way, about the Yager thing. They said they, had, they took his son out of school. He drove four hours to the game just <laughs> just for Bob. Motherfuckers him. always drove four hours and had to get babysitters when something gets canceled. Whenever I had to cancel a show, all I see are the comments of I had to drive four hours and get babysitters, and my son's autistic. Always, always those things. I don't believe you. And the in this the Penguins official statement was similar to your own that it, it just. Uh, it's an unfortunate incident, but it just adds to the legend. Adds to the legend. Yama Yager, never retired, buddy. We love you. Last headline. Now, before we do, I just want to say that this is a Jesselnik special. This is a headline that I saw the story for, and, and to give credit to Reddit, the JRVP Reddit thread, I saw this on the Reddit thread, and I immediately sent it to Greg. And now we're replacing a story that Greg had tried to get us to do. And that story, what, Greg, read the headline of the story you wanted us to do. Well, I put it away. Why? Actually, no, read the headline that we're going to do now first. Okay. The fun one. Okay. Uh, the headline uh, that we're going to do now. I just want to get it exactly how, how you saw it. Um, here, let's see. And then now I've got all these fucking emails of you and... Uh, you know that I sent to you trying to get tickets. It's confusing. Um, Miami Dade PD. This is my headline. Uh, man shoots himself in the head. Bullet also strikes girlfriend in the head. Yes, that was Greg's headline. Greg wanted to talk about a guy who attempted to uh, take his own life, did, but also shot his girlfriend in the head by mistake, which is a tough one. And honestly, uh, JRVP, that's nothing. That's like a, that's a odd news. That's a, <laughs> well, oh, bunch of kittens born kind of shit for us. But the story that I was like, let's do this instead is... The headline is, uh, Pennsylvania Chipotle manager masturbates in front of customers. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a little easier to wrap the Sometimes I just around. like to raise the difficulty, make, make you sweat a little I bit. Was, I was, no one's sweating over shot yourself and accidentally shot your girlfriend too. Well, I could have had fun with that. But it's way more fun to talk about a Chipotle manager getting fired for masturbating in front of customers. <laughs> I don't get the outrage here. Where was he supposed to go? <laughs> You've been to Chipotle. There's nowhere to hide. you got to masturbate in front of everyone, in front of God and their mother, I think is the saying. Yeah, he was, he was in a booth, though. Like, he, he was out in the restaurant. He was not, like, behind... The uh, you know where where they make the vegetables and that he wasn't like providing the freshest of ingredients you know behind the the counter or anything he was out in a in a booth like where people sit and eat yes so he was like let me keep it clean <laughs> I don't want to break I don't want to break any health codes I'm gonna go jerk off with the people yeah he was in the booth and yeah he's getting charged for many things and decent exposure all this stuff he took it out he made it happen and uh, it was all verifiable on on video. Look, Greg, you've masturbated at work before. I've masturbated at work before. Aaron's masturbating right now. It's fine. It's okay to do. I think it just shows how hard it is to use the bathroom at Chipotle. Have you ever been to a Chipotle and like, can I use the bathroom? And like, oh yeah, the code is nine digits that's always changing and there's always like three homeless people in there making a quilt, I assume. It's hard to get in the bathroom at Chipotle. I get. You'd be a little bored. You know, dinner rushes over. I'm going to go sit down. Nobody look at me. <laughs> I just want to have the confidence uh, and the comfort in my body that, uh, that this man has. I, I would like, imagine if your superpower was when you masturbate, you turn invisible. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. You got to masturbate. Right. And, and then you turn invisible while you're masturbating. As soon as you finish masturbating, you can see you again. Maybe that's what happened to him. I, yeah, I, I don't know if he, you know, went to completion or what, but I just, I assume it, uh, just to do that with that many people. I don't know. I would think that'd be difficult. When you get caught masturbating in public, it's not the finish that gets you. Mm. It's the rhythm. 
You know, going back to Gloria Estevan, rhythm is going to get you. You know what I mean? You're like, who's shaking the bench? That's what, that's what leads to your capture. It's never like, what smells like chlorine? It's always the rhythm. I do have to admit, though, uh, like those, those burritos at Chipotle. When's the last time you ate Chipotle? They're pretty fucking hot, you know. Um, almost never. Yeah. I don't know. I used to. Well, you think you I live think, in I live in L.A. If you're and a lot of people eat a lot of Chipotle in L.A., including you used to. I used to. But you also had one downstairs, and they gave you like a free card. And yeah. That that's different. And we were younger then. There's so Chipotle many. used to be great. It's it, the it's quality still good. has dipped. It's good it, enough it, depending on where you live. But there's so many good burritos here. You, you're going out of your way to. The get last two or three years, the quality is complete. The last time I had Chipotle, it was disgusting. Like it was truly disgusting. Mm. It used to be so so good. Do you know if you work there? Go ahead and jerk off. Chances of you getting caught jerking off in 2024 at a Chipotle are way less than they used to be, you know, back in the day. I might go hit Paquito Mas right after this uh, taping. Like Delicious. When you say hit, <laughs> eat the... No. All right. And now it's time for... Choo-choo! <laughs> recommendation Station. Greg, you want to go first? Well, you stepped on mine, but I'm going to do it anyways. I am going to recommend uh, Blue Lips by Schoolboy Q. I, sometimes I like to recommend non-books, and uh, I've been listening to it nonstop. It's a great book. I mean, a great uh, album to run to. There's bangers aplenty. I like the variety. Uh, I just feel like he's been, not that I know Schoolboy Q for that long. You were the first one that kind of tipped me off to him. But I feel like this is one of those albums where it's like you're a veteran. You've done a lot of different stuff and maybe it's all been leading to this. I feel like this is his this is his magnum opus. Like there's everything on this album you could want in a rap. I kind of agree. But I think that his evolution as an artist, like every album is just like more evidence of that evolution. Someone I read a review that described him as like constantly molting on his albums. Mm. And like you're just like watching him that I would think the next one is just, uh, you know, I want to see the evolution as long as he's alive. That it's just uh, every album is is incredible. I'm, it's a gift. I'm just I'm not. There's no judgment. I'm just like oh wow. I, I'm glad I get to listen to this. That Schoolboy Q was always great. Always a uh, always a uh, you know a an event when he releases an album. So yeah, Schoolboy Q. Uh, what's the name? Of it? Blue Lip. Blue Lips. Blue Lips. Yeah. Banger. Uh, banger. I'm gonna recommend a book I read a couple weeks ago. This came out about a month ago. And I, listen, I love David Mamet. Uh, big David Mamet fan, and he wrote a memoir called Everywhere and Oink Oink. It's about his like misadventures in Hollywood, and it's basically a bunch of stories of different ways he lost a ton of money telling someone to go fuck themselves in a meeting. Like it's <laughs> so funny. Everyone, it was, I remember there was one guy who's just like, they're, they're like has this huge project. He's going to be the writer on it, and it's always like he gets hired, and then they come in and tell him his his script sucks. They're like we love your writing, but this is fucking terrible. He's like every job, that's all they do to him. And there was one where the guy's like, you know, he's, yeah, we will do this and we'll do that. And, you know, who knows? You know, maybe you know some people don't like Mexican food. And then everyone's kind of like, huh? And then it tur- and he goes, turns to David Mamet, and David Mamet goes. What the fuck do you mean? Some people don't like Mexican food. And he's like, five minutes later, we're out of the meeting, and my friend's like, "You lost me millions of dollars just now, but I loved it." He's just, he's so funny, and he's mm. so kind of like curmudgeony in the best way. And again, a, a brilliant writer. That uh, everywhere in Oink Oink by David Mamet is uh, is an absolute blast. He's very much against diversity. Which is a funny, a, like an old man mammoth, but uh, but a legendary uh, screenwriter, playwright, um, great great book, fun to read. Everywhere in Oink Oink, by David Mamet. Aaron, you got anything you want to recommend? I've got nothing. Awesome, glad to hear it, Aaron. And that was Choo Choo Recommendation Station. Aaron, are you okay? <clears throat> I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. Clear your throat, buddy. You know that Choo Choo's coming. Yep. I need a clear one. Mm-hmm. And now Walker, get me out of here. Whoa, Nelly, for time to that's a spicy meatball.